Ladies and gentlemen, K Kim here with the Traders Club. Welcome to the market update. Today is October 2nd, 2019. Saturday evening time. You're probably gonna get this late evening. So um hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Uh market is hitting and printing new all-time highs. It has broken out of uh, some of the uh, broken out of the uh, rising pivot that we've been looking at uh, last couple weeks here Let's go and look at it um, Here here. So we'll as usual uh, on a weekly basis. Let's start with um, a Spider QQQ diamond Russell banks and the semi right so um, we've been talking about this here, right? and and just just to recap we've been talking about um you know, Bayer's calling this a triple top. And if you've been following my video and my blog and my Twitter at 2K Kim, we'll see some decline. What we've been talking about is that we'll, we'll see some decline, but it's not gonna be a severe decline, right? We talked about that it's not gonna be another like 240 or coming back down, retesting the December lows. But we talked about how it's going to stall here. Why? What was the reason of that? Well, because well, people are chasing it up here, right? Most people got, you know, wiped out here or closed out their lungs with loss. And so, and they missed out this move. And what happens? Well, they want to chase it. Now they don't want to, you know, miss the train. So what happens is they start chasing it up here. And you know, when the public start get into it, it gets hectic. When it gets crowded, it always becomes hectic, right? And that's what we saw last five months with these levels, right? It just made things difficult. Like, is it going to, you know, are we gonna break out or are we gonna tank? Is it gonna be, um, you know, a big volatile year or is it gonna be a bear market starting from here? The crash is gonna come. Is it gonna be a, a bull trap where it's gonna come straight down? Or is it gonna be a head and shoulder formation? Remember, right? We talked about that. It was none of those things. It was none of those none of those things. What really was is that again i'm just recapping we talked about this on previous videos is that well you saw a huge move which is about 20 what 25 percent move since the december lows right you see a 25 percent move in like a in quote in one quarter well well it's crazy to think that it can't keep going higher if you thought that these moves are crazy well you're crazy we just saw 25% move. We'll give it a break because well, market needs to rest. Market needs to pull back. Market needs to cultivate higher lows before it can continue higher. Because you know what? I would have said the market is crazy if it would have kept going higher. But these moves, definitely not crazy. If anything, these pullbacks would have given you a gift to buy the dips and to accumulate before next leg run higher. So anyway, so we've been talking about this uh, rising pivot. We actually finally breaking out. I can actually readjust this. You can see so we can hit the tip of the peak here. And we just broken out of that. Does that mean that it's gonna go straight to 320? No, that does that's, that doesn't mean that it's gonna go 320. Does that mean that we're not gonna come back down? No, that's not what it means. It means we're cultivating higher highs here, right? And that's what's important. And you can see we got higher lows here what's the definition of downtrend lower highs and lower lows what is the definition of uptrend higher lows higher highs everybody knows this and yet when markets start you know shaking and baking well crash is coming doesn't matter we got higher lows it doesn't matter none of it matters crash is gonna come and that's what most people are you know just freaking out they're just going out of their minds like oh my god this whole thing's gonna crash right um, and we got we got a gap up, nice gap up there. You know what I want to do? I'm actually going to put this up here. See if we can hold those gaps. It will be important. But we got gap here. We got big gap here. We also got gap here as well. A lot of gaps, higher lows, higher highs. We are we're actually well above the um, you know September 2018 highs. I mean that's where the 200% decline came about, right? That peak there. Actually, we're we're four percent from that. So, so we're actually we're well above this level. You see? We're well above that. So see what I don't understand is what I don't understand is 
once the market gets in a steep correction, like we've seen late December, right? We saw that 20% decline and then market gets back up, makes new all time highs and continues to create, cultivate and establish higher lows and higher highs. But then somehow crash is coming. You see what I mean? Like that has never happened. Go back. Uh, you, you can go back and you, you can't. If you find something, please get back at me. Let me know. Go back to historical chart where market comes down 20%. It has to be a 20%. Comes down 20%. Okay. 21st and from the peak. From the peak. Right. So from here to here, 20%. Right. Yeah, exactly. 20%. From the peak, all time high peak, it comes down 20% and it makes new all time high and the market crashed and we got into a recession. I want you to go look for it and if you find it, please let me know. So you see that we saw 20% decline and the market gets up, but it doesn't go straight and it does go straight up, but it doesn't continue to go higher. What it does is we actually take its time to you know, consolidate that move, cultivate a higher low because market cannot move without intermediate term higher lows. So essentially what these were, they were intermediate term higher lows before market can get back to the upside. Resume with this primary term uptrend because I say resume because we're never in a bear market. You know, maybe sometimes you hear people say we're in a bear market in 2018 and 19 because it went nowhere. No, we were never in a bear market. People don't understand what bear market is. Everybody looking at things in long short term, that's what they say that. Because the market they say things like market hasn't gone anywhere in the next last two years. Therefore it was a bear market. No, it wasn't a bear market because well after after a huge move that we've seen in 2016 through 17, it only makes sense market is gonna see some kind of a correctional move or consolidation. We saw a huge move, right? And then now market is getting ready to resume because we're always in a primary term uptrend, right? People are so weird because every time when people see something like this, they say, oh, that's the biggest bubble. That's the biggest bubble ever, man. That's gonna, yeah, that, that's it, bro. That's, that's, it's going to 50, it's going to 100. That's the biggest bubble ever. It's everything, everything bubble. That's a new term now, right? Everything bubble. But they've been saying, did you know that they've been, I don't know about everything bubble, but did you know that they've been saying something similar to that, like since 2014, like, 13, 14, 15? Right, they thought stocks were too stocks were expensive back in like 180s in 2016. Well, we're at 300. So if you thought stocks were expensive at 180, well, you ain't buying anything here. So you're gonna. This is how the market is gonna continue to leave so many people behind. And so those people who didn't were not participate. Right, they can't go long here. They can't just go full on bullish and invest in the market. Either they're gonna be like very very short term bull. Right, they're gonna be scalping it here and there. I'm a scalper, right? I'm, a, I'm gonna scalp here to here, yay, right? Or they're gonna see why trying to go. You know, that's what bears, what most people think, what most retail traders think is that why go for these little tiny moves when you can make big fast move, right? Isn't it interesting how most people want to get rich quick, but they understand that get rich quick is usually doesn't play out. I mean, how did Warren Buffett accumulated his wealth? Did he get rich quick or did it took time to build that wealth? See, most people don't understand the power of a compound growth. You see what I'm saying? You don't understand it. So most people trade the market like they want to win a jackpot. Their biggest, most inspiring film is the big short because they want to make huge money very, very quickly. Well, you know what? Sometimes some people do win a jackpot. So, because some dude win a jackpot doesn't mean you're gonna able to win a jackpot. You see, I'm not saying that the the, the big short, the Michael Burry guy, you know, he he won a jackpot. I'm not saying that at all. That just, you know, I don't have that kind of gift to be able to do what he did. I'm just saying the probability stand point of view, probability point of view, it is a difficult, the most difficult endeavor in this world is to short this market to to pinpoint where this you know where the crash is going to come cuz trust me if anybody is preparing you know for a crack or crash most times even before the crash comes they probably all got wiped out and then when they're wiped out crash probably come later after those people got wiped out 
it's is is one of the most most difficult thing to do, you know. But everybody wants to get rich quick, and they miss out big move, and uh, you know, market is at three oh six today, but. People who thought the market was expensive, you know, stocks were expensive at 180. Well, now they're just drooling. They can't go long here. And I, 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 and I explained this earlier this year that people who are drooling, right? People who missed out this entirety of this move, right? Do you know that they chased it up here? They chased, they chased long there. Most cash people are bears or bulls or people who missed out this entirety of this move. They, you know what? That's how the, the brutality of this market. They chased the move here. All the hedge. Do you know that most hedge funds were bearish in 2016 and 17? You know, they reported that most hedge funds were bearish in 2015 and 16. So they missed out on this move. And then finally, you know what? We 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 get a correct, and they thought, okay, crash is gonna come. But we get a, you know, we get this base, and then finally everybody jumping in, and this wipes out everybody. And I, and I read an article that. Um, like hundreds of hedge funds were closed by the end of uh, December. And a lot of, lot of many retail traders were wiped out in late December. And then these beast just murders everybody. And we go back to 306, just what? I mean, we got up to new Otama in just three, four months. It's crazy. We're 306, it's bullish, it's bullish. I'm not saying it's going to be bullish on Monday. I'm not saying, you know what I mean? We're going to go to 320 in two weeks. But it's bullish. Sentiment is bullish. Trend is bullish. Everything is bullish. The crash is not going to come. The sentiment is getting better and better. And trend is getting better. And momentum is getting better and better. Now that we're here. But I think, but the thing about it is, yeah, it is kind of scary to go full on bullish here at 306. This is why this market is going to reward those who take risks. I mean, I'm long since here. Well, and I have so many positions that I've been long since 2016 lows. So, and I've been buying these dips. And so it's easier for me to ride that and, and easier for me to celebrate this move versus, you know, if you're con contemplating, if I want to go all in here, you see what I'm saying? It's not easy to go all in now at all time highs. But I think this was tremendous opportunity. And some of these were also some of the opportunity that you were able to accumulate more. Um, but you know how, how people are, you know, they when it, it, what, most people are like, okay, you see this kind of move and they all say, okay, next decline, I want to buy that dip. But when the next decline actually comes, you're scared. Cause you see like CNBC chart master, he says, well, 200 is coming. Chart master comes back while well, 200 is coming. Chart master comes back while well, 200 is coming. And we're at 306. Let's go to Q's. Uh, so I gave you that level as well. So you can see we're just right on that. We're just breaking out. But again, this does not mean we're gonna shoot up next several weeks going up every single day. This does not mean that it cannot go back in. It means we are faithfully cultivating higher lows and higher highs. But I believe that this pivot level, which I also drawn in Spider, is gonna be important. If we do continue higher sooner or later, probably gonna come back and retest, and it's gonna become a pivotal point before this thing gets back up to, or gets up to 210, you know, 220 or something like that. So that pivot level that I've drawn, I think it's gonna be important level. So I think we're gonna keep an eye on that, but I don't want you to be so precise with the level Right, but it just understand the level. It's gonna be preference, or it's gonna be the reference level, not pre reference level, right? Because it, it might go up, it might pull back, but it's not gonna be perfectly, you know what I mean? It's gonna be perfectly bounced from. Maybe it will, but it's gonna be the area that is gonna kind of hang around, retest prior resistance as new support before one higher. So I think we're gonna pay attention to that, and we'll follow up every week. We'll follow up every week. We'll look at those levels every week together. And we'll continue to talk about this level. Diamond has not yet broken out to the upside, but that's the level to watch there. Russell 2000. Russell 2000 actually um, cleared this kind of a short term resistance level right there. I think Russell is going to all time high, near all time level by end of this year. 
maybe even more. But remember what I talked about when market is, remember, you see, if, you, if you've been following, you know, my video, and most of you have been pretty much this entire year, that I said that when we see a bullish move, you're going to see the Russell and the banks just do more, right? That's what you're going to see. You're going to see them doing more. So you can see when Spider is at 0.93 and the Q's at 0.91, well, Russell is at 1.7 and the banks is 1.46. This is a money rotation, right? I mean, I'm doing the same thing, actually. There are stocks that has moved, moved, you know, moved quite a bit already. So maybe take some off from those stocks, put back into stocks that has been underperforming. See, smart money is doing that. So I've been buying when, 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 bank, let's go to banks now. So when the banks came down hard in on July and October, not only I was buying calls very aggressively on XLF, but I was buying accumulating bank stocks very, very aggressively. So I, I own every single bank stocks out there. Like I got Goldman Sachs, I, I said this last week, right? Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, uh, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Capital One. I even, I think I also even have American Express. So I, I, ha I have all of those. And that I, would, I don't buy, I don't, I don't buy it up here on a breakout. I never do breakouts, right? I was buying these dips and anticipating a breakout. And good thing about XLF is that this was a key level. Here, let me get rid of this. This right here is the key level. Why? Well, from here, this thing tanked. tanked. That was a key pivotal level for the market to reclaim, to neutralize this selling pressure, right? Remember, I I've been talking about this all year long that technically XLF is still in a downtrend in the intermediate term because of these lower highs and lower lows. Do you know what just happened on Friday? Now we can say, we can categorize, we can label this no longer as, a, as in downtrend, but now we can look at this as a base more like inverted head and shoulders if you want to put a technical term to it. Because we're no longer in a downtrend, because we're no longer in a lower highs and lower lows, we cultivated equal highs. This becomes a base, so the market is getting ready to stretch its wings to resume with this primary term uptrend. Because we're never in a bear market, we're just in a correctional move after a bullish run. Bullish run, correction. Bullish run, correction. Bullish run. Move has not even started yet. We're probably going to 40s. Not this year, but maybe end of next year, something like that. But we're going to have a big run is coming. One last one, semiconductor here. Semiconductor, you can see this is what they call bearish rising wedge. People still trade off of these stupid wedges. Like... It's dumb. It is so stupid. Like, you really think like, uh, okay, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> but um, prior resistance, and we quickly came down, hit it. We got right back up here, and wow, semis just killing it from here to here. Sixty-one percent since December. Sixty-one, six-one. And how many times you hear bears say, this thing is ready to come down to 60s, right? I remember, I think I, I heard somebody told me that that semis were so weak, that semis crashing, that, um, that it's gonna take the whole broad market with it, you know? And semi got this potentially you know, mega crashing head and shoulder formation has been confirmed, check the neckline already, and we got decline made lower highs and lower lows. And then that thing just made new all time high. So crazy how fast that went up. And then it pulled back, these were the time. If you missed out this entry, you could have bought it here. But again, isn't that interesting? When you missed out this move, you tell yourself, you know what, on the next dip, I'm gonna buy that dip. And then the dip comes, you're scared. 
When the dip comes, you're scared. And now you're 130, you're buying it at 130. That's not a prudent strategy, by the way. But anyway, market is bullish. I am very bullish in the market. I've been very, very bullish in the market since 2016. I'll be bullish remainder of this year and next all throughout next year that does not mean the market is going to go up forever without pullbacks we're going to have a pullbacks we're going to have a correction we're probably not going to see 20 percent corrections anytime soon we're not going to see 20 percent corrections next year either we're going to see 7 8 10 12 percent corrections sometime next year this year i still think we may see we could see some volatility going forward you know so we'll continue to kind of follow up look at this level right here this is going to be important pivot right i think market market could continue higher but i think sooner or later we're going to come back and retest it maybe we'll go to all the 320 and come back maybe we'll go to 310 and come back i don't know but if you've been a, if you're a bull and if you've been bullish in this market um this should cause for a celebration and this should be a great weekend for you and this should be a, should be a great year for you and I hopefully uh, hopefully we'll have a we'll finish strong but uh, we'll we'll follow up next week we'll go from there uh, you guys uh, have a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you good luck trading next week and I'll talk to you next week yeah.